to feel a part of something. They, want, they just want acceptance. You know what I'm saying? They're not, they're not domineering. They just want to be a part of a family, be a part of a group, to fit in, to, you know, to have that vibe. You know, for us, and some of us don't have that feeling. We, we've been here a long time and don't have that feeling, but I, I, I try to be as loving as I can be without taking me out of my character. You shouldn't want me to be outside of my character because then from that point on, I don't have the grace necessary to bring you to where God wants to take us. Amen. You know, so I don't try to repeat, be like other pastors. You know, I did tell you, I'm an I'm apostle with pastoral ministry. Now, there are pastors that are pastors with pastor ministry. And they'll stroke you from here to, to the cows come home. They'll tell you, you the best thing since so-and-so. You in my corner, I love you. So they're cheerleaders. I'm not a cheerleader, I'm a coach. Apostles are coaches. They tell you, say, hey, you need to get the free throw and shoot some. You need to, your free throws are off. You shoot the low percentage. So you need to, you know, you need to, I know you shoot 10 of them after the game is over. You need 100. You at 60%. We need to crank you up to another notch because it's going to be crucial down the line. So that's what a coach does. They look at your weaknesses and say, hey, this is what you need to do with it. They enjoy the safety and, and protection of the foe. They love hanging around in the group. They love hanging in groups. They don't hang on fringes. They love being among the number. They can, this is what I love. They can, they, can, uh, they can survive the changes in the environment, peaks and valleys. I've talked to so many folks lately. And, you know, some you can see around and some that you can't see because they're, they're, they're in a valley, a peak. You, so the thing is, if you don't have any good habits in the, in the peak, well, they're in the valley, put it that way. If you don't, there are times in your walk with God, you're in the peaks, you're in a high place. And the same habits you had in the peaks, you need to have in the valley. Because that shows you if you got a foundational problem. If what you do in the peaks don't match what you do in the valleys, then your foundation is off. It ain't how you, what you do when you, everything's going good and you're excited and love the Lord because He done bless you with something. We so pacified. No, no, it's when it's dark out. When the eyes are stacked against you. You get what I'm saying? When it seems like the enemy is coming in. Then like a flood, the Lord lift up a standard against them. It just comes to show you God's handiwork, His power, His majesty. Sometimes God will turn the light off, out on you. I, I've been there. You turn the lights out and be like, where you at, God? You had to feel around the room and try to find a... Amen. Looking for the switch. Then as soon as you try to fill the wall and find the switch, all of a sudden, the light comes on by itself. And God's mercy endures for him. Then all of a sudden, you say, that's God's hand on my life. Oh, you do love me. And then you ride on that euphoria for a little bit. Then the next one come around the corner. And then you have to go back and you have to pull back in your memory cycle and say, hey, God was faithful here, 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 here. He's going to be faithful now. When they're in pain, next one. When they're in pain, you can't see their struggle or discomfort. So they don't advertise it. They don't send texts out. They don't put it on Facebook. They don't have to air out their junk. They don't have to call people and let everybody know about certain things. They learn to bite their tongue. They don't, they're not this wrong. You don't see it on their face. They, they may go through that's, re that's resolve when somebody can be in a trial and don't have to have it like a neon light. Don't you see I'm hurting? And most folks that are hurting don't really reach out anyway. And see, let me tell you something. In hurt, you can't discern where your lifeline is. Because your discernment is in chaos. Everything is a high alert. So if you look at, you, you see, you don't wait till the house is on fire 
So everything in your life is on blaze. You connect ahead of time. You ask the Spirit of God, you pray about it, say, God, who do I need to connect with? Because I know a friend is born for the day of adversity. You have to pull on scriptures like that. You don't wait till you're sinking and you're trying to reach up. It's like you're going swimming and you're on the deep end of the pool. And how many know somebody drowning, they ain't got no sense? <laughs> they just try to not drown. Hell, yeah, yeah, they pull you right out of that boat. If you're on a boat or you in a... Hey, man, you trying to give them a lifeline, trying to give them a raft or something, and they will, they will, talk, they will bring you into their situation. You have to tell them, calm down. Take it easy. That's what you got to find somebody to, to speak to your emotions. Say, calm down. Take it easy. Russo. Russo. You, you need some spiritual chamomile. Tension tape. Find somebody that can carry that fragrance on them. Tension tape. You can soothe the wild beast in you. Amen. Okay. Then we talked about how uh, you know uh, the goats. We said how they like to climb up on things. Well, goats. Uh, yeah, they like to climb up on things. Other people's situations are not, and they're very opportunistic. So remember, I said they climb up on things. Did I? Did I? Did we make it a goat? Okay, let's play if we did it. Yeah, they like to climb up on things. They love goats. They don't like boundaries. They like to be up on things. They like to be in people's business. They like to get the 411. They like the latest dirt, the latest news. They feel empowered. You know, they real grimy. Uh, I'm trying to look for a word. Messy. There you go. They real messy. They full of, you know, and they, they just want to know, you know, and they'll tell you, and it's almost like they're trying to get you with honey. Girl, I know what you're going through. Come on, you can always talk to me. I got your back. Then all of a sudden, y'all, if you got friends that are in similar circles, then you try to figure out why your other friend is looking at you crazy. That friend with honey got you. And it's a truck car. So you can't tell everybody your problem because most folks can't handle your mess. They can't handle your issues. They just excited that you are messed up and you don't even know it. Well, I've been around for 14 years. It don't matter. Some people are gluttons. They love to see your demise. They don't want to see you progress. That goes for family and friends. There's some family members that are looking for your fall. I got some. They looking for me to fall. You still in church? You still selling dope? You still womanizing? You still lying, cheat? Huh? Let, let, let's put the air out of yourself. What's some of the stuff you still doing? I'm over here. <laughs> there was not none of the stuff I'm doing. Okay? All right. So they climb up on things. Be all in everybody business. They, they have no contentment, lack purpose, no zeal, all that together. They're just reckless and selfish. That's what goats are. They just, they ain't got, they got no intent, none. Just, they, they, they calculated it and they're discontent. They have no contentment. Then the other, number three, they like to draw others to them. So they, they got, they have a power on the inside of, on the inside of most ghosts carry an influence to bring other people into their circle. But the people that's coming into the circle among goats, because the goats look like sheep, because they sound like sheep, we don't know. Or they, should I say not we? <laughs> they don't know. Until they finally hang around them long enough, they say, hold on, something ain't right. Now I'm feeling that way. Now I'm climbing up on other things. Now I can't listen to a pastor. Now I've got one eye on them, another eye out the door. Yeah, because they like to draw others to them. They don't have a problem with it. And they also like to wander and roam in other territories. <laughs> we already know what that's about, right? Yeah, we got church on Sunday, but you over somewhere else on Sunday. Yeah, that's a go. Tell you that, that's a go. That's a go. Tell them, tell, tell them say, sheep follow. Sheep follow. Sheep follow. Whatever, whatever's on the table at the church, they, we're there. Whatever's there. Whatever there. If we do an outreach, we're there. Whatever the apostle or the leader asks, asks for it, you put it on the table. You're giving it up. Say, hey, here, this is what I do. This is what I do. Something should strike on the inside, which is, we're going to talk about that. 
<laughs> no discipline. They have no discipline. They have an old goat mentality, which they cannot be changed. So you got no discipline and an old goat mentality. They can't be guided. They can't be instructed. They can't be led and set in their ways. That's what a goat mentality is. Therefore, they have no discipline. They won't allow anybody to direct them, lead them, confront them. They're old goat. <laughs> the old goat. They don't like borders. They don't like assigned authority. They don't like borders, which means you may get assigned to a project, and this is the person you're supposed to work with, but you get the job done on your own. Go. Well, I just like working by myself. That's twice as work, twice, twice as much work. If it's a group project, there's nothing wrong with asking somebody for help. That's a sign of humility. I'm doing some things in the new season and I'm learning some stuff, man, and I ain't got no problem asking. You know, it's not a strike against your manhood because you got to ask something. Am I right? We all come from different circles. We all been exposed to different things. We just got to be willing to get out of that box. Mm -hmm. And you find out it's a wide open terrain out there. You're like, oh, okay. That's my own evolution. We'll talk sometime, but... We gotta be willing to do it as a group. It's a group venture. Those want to they, they hate groups. They don't they, yeah. I'm, I'm look, let me just tell you something about me. I don't care who you are, I always watch your individuality. Your uniqueness. Your aloofness. And your unwillingness to connect. That rubs me bad. Bad. I don't say it to people, but I just watch. I want to know why. If you've been baptized with the same spirit, 